look, where the tall fence ends, I could just go under these rails or slip my body right through. And the only thing separating me from the United States and Mexico is the small barbed wire here. I can actually see the smoke from um, over here on the east side of the mountain. And it's actually right on the ridge on the crest. So fire crews are working extra hard to make sure it doesn't jump to the west side of the mountain, the Albuquerque side. To give you an idea of how massive these buildings are, just one building stretches about four football fields from end to end, and they're building six of these. About two weeks ago, I brought you a live report right here at Tingley Beach, but I stood on the ground just right over here but that area is now all underwater. Now take a look at this. The water levels are so high now, they reach all the way here to the beginning of the dock. Yeah, Shelly, it's pretty incredible. This tree here fell on this home near San Pedro and Candelaria. You can see here, the roots are just ripped out of the ground. This tree is now balancing really on the roof and it's just missing the carport here. Well, right now we know one person is dead from a gunshot wound, two others also sustained gunshot wounds and they are in critical condition. I wanna show you the scene here right now. Again, we are on University and Gibson. I'm with a big group of people helping Stagecoach land. As you can see here, some very happy people. We're holding on to a really long rope. Katie Potter walked into Aztec High School Thursday morning to fill in at a computer lab. Six minutes into her day, she was hiding with students in a closet. I initially heard pop, pop, pop. Katie Potter is a substitute teacher and had no way to lock the computer lab door when she first heard the shots. I said, you're all going to go in there, 17 students, and they they went, they ran in there. It was a small room in the back of the computer lab. It's no bigger than a closet, really. I said, now you're all gonna get on the floor and you're gonna stay down and we've gotta be very quiet. She says the gunshots were coming closer and closer. What's going through your head right now? It was just kind of sheer panic. They laid there, but one student was missing. Francisco Fernandez, who friends call Paco. He's one of the two students who died. Potter says he left to go to the bathroom. First thing in the morning, I always have him sign in, sign out. He wanted to go. I said, OK, sign out, and he did. He didn't come back. The shooter came into the computer lab. We were the only one he got into. Because you didn't have a key? Yes. Potter says the closet they were hiding in had windows, but the teacher had covered them up with paper. I don't know why he didn't shoot those windows out. Because had he shot them out, he could have seen us and he could have just taken us then. She says bullets were flying everywhere. He just started taking out computers and shooting through walls. And Mr. Lanier next door told me, he said, I didn't think any of you made it. I had bullet holes in my room from your room. Potter says she knew what to do thanks to attending lockdown trainings throughout her 25 years as an educator. And Potter, Potter says that she hopes schools across the country train both teachers and substitutes what to do in active shooter situations. Live in Aztec tonight, Justin Matthews, KOAT Action 7 News. Shootings, stabbings, domestic violence, and thefts. Those are just some of the crimes at a local 7-Eleven store. Action 7 News reporter Justin Matthews joins us live to show us what the city is demanding to make one of your favorite convenience stores safer. Justin. Yeah, Albuquerque City Councilors met tonight to make that 7-Eleven on Catherine and San Mateo Boulevard a nuisance or problem property. It would force the owners to clean things up. There's constantly police and emergency vehicles at the 7-Eleven. There's usually always cops over there, like like situations with people, you know, drunk disorderly. Neighbors and nearby businesses say they're fed up with the crime plaguing the 7-Eleven on Catherine Avenue and San Mateo Boulevard. This 7-Eleven is no stranger to law enforcement. Between January 1st of 2018 and April of this year, the Albuquerque Police Department has been called here almost 300 times. Here's the breakdown. APD says that 16 month period has had almost 50 thefts, about a dozen assaults, two stabbings and one shooting. Firefighters were called there 70 times and the city's 311 center received almost 700 complaints from neighbors reporting incidents within a block from the store. City Councilor Pat Davis is sponsoring a resolution that would make the store a public nuisance. It would force the owner to make changes to its business practices to decrease crime. One thing on the table, 
putting an end to alcohol sales. Even when I go over, I see people that are already drunk buying some more beer and just all of that. And it's just like, why are you continuing to sell to them when they're already drunk? The city says it has been trying to get a hold of 7-Eleven's lawyers for three weeks, but just heard back from them this morning. Yeah, city councilors say a lawyer agreed to make changes to reduce crime at the store. I reached out to a district manager of 7-Eleven for comment, but I did not hear back. Live in downtown, Justin Matthews, KOAT, Action 7 News. Well, look how deep the water is. You can barely see my shoes. The Mendoza family has lived on this property for almost seven decades, and a lot of their memories have been washed away. This is just devastating. Water destroyed this Valencia County home. Every room in the house, including closets, has some form of damage. Well, the corner of the house here is what used to be the living room. Family says it's been sinking lower and lower by the hour. The window is now uh, protruding forward and the side of the house, the north side of the house, has now buckled uh, outward. Carmen Mendoza grew up in this house. She says her father built it himself in 1950. My dad is 90 years old, my mom is 87, and they run a farm as best as they can. My dad has sheep, my mom at 87 still washes windows, still paints fences. Now they're staying in a hotel, waiting to get back to the place they've called home for so long. And my dad looks at her and says, we don't have a home to go home to anymore. It's gone. She says it wasn't just the torrential rain that caused all this damage. An irrigation ditch in the back of the property breached in several spots south of Boleyn, causing a mess like this for dozens of homes. So with all the flooding and damage to the home, Mendoza says it has to be demolished. They're hoping to get a manufactured home in so they can stay on the property. Reporting in Berlin, Justin Matthews, KOAT, Action 7 News. Well, you can see here where the water level was at its highest point, which was back in February. The tan rocks become white here, but now I am 75 feet above Elephant Butte surface because the water levels are so low. From the pontoon boat, we were looking up at what's usually underwater. Man, it's just devastating for everybody. Randall Bell says he's on the lake to fish almost every day. He says the community is suffering. People aren't wanting to make the trip to the Butte because the lake is small and shallow, causing some people to ruin their boats. Running up on rocks and the banks and stuff like that. Boating down the Butte, we came across these river trees poking out of the water. Anglers say it has been five years since they've seen this. But anglers say they've been preparing for these conditions. Last winter, Randall and other anglers worked with New Mexico Game and Fish to put in fish habitats so the fish would survive when the levels got low. Earl Conway was part of the group. We put in Christmas tree piles, juniper piles and then some artificial habitats and floating islands to uh, uh, to add to the uh, cover for them. Conway says it's been successful. As you can see, we weren't the only fishing boat out there today. When it draws down like this, it concentrates all the fish, all the bait, everything else into a very small area. He says that's good news for anglers as long as there's still water in the butte. So what is it going to take to get the water levels to get all the way back up to this point? Well, this winter, rain and snowpack. Justin Matthews, KOAT, Action 7 News.